you know, how do you adjust and how do you become sort of efficient in, in this sort of rapidly changing environment in terms of sourcing data and producing insights and producing the data in the first place for those who are in, in that uh, situation? Why don't we go around the horn, start with you, Sarah. Well, as I mentioned, we have a low-code platform. It's enterprise software. Um, it's point-and-click efficiency for creating agents to pull data from any source, whether it's a web page, a document, a database, or an API. Uh, we can enrich that data using process automation, using any um, AI enrichment, uh, sentiment scoring, or translation. Um, and then we can package up, format, and deliver the data to any endpoint. Um, so this is a very efficient process. But you need to be very careful um, with the speed to market with this data, because you need to make sure that you're not um, overstepping any uh, compliance risks, rules, any guidelines that you may have established for your, your operation. Um, so we also supply um, transparency into the data operation, um, permissions, controls, audit logs, and governance um, for the full operation. All right, thank you. I think your, your question is a, a great one. You know, if we, we look at the past three years, um, it, it's really unfolded in a different way than um, certainly any prediction or forecast that I had seen. Um, the, the only certainty I think we have is that, you know, 18 months from now, the issues we're going to be dealing with are not ones that are at the forefront of our minds today. And so the question is, how can you be familiar with the data and techniques that are out there to, um, to adapt quickly and respond to whatever the issues may be. And I think a large part of that is meeting with a lot of, of vendors, having a lot of familiarity of what's out there, and being ready to act quickly um, when events unfold differently from how you would have, uh, how you would have guessed. I think uh, as a pension plan, we have a unique perspective here because we are a very long horizon investor. And so while you might want to kind of look and understand what's happening over the next couple of years, we're really looking at how our assets going to perform over 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so I think we're, we're trying to understand what is the regime shift we're going through right now? Um, what is it most akin to? Though we realize things are going to be, I think, quite different, um, and this might be unlike anything we've ever seen before. And then what are the new types of data or new sources of data we can and should be ingesting to try and, and, and bubble up relevant themes? Um, so one big focus we've had recently has been on uh, more qualitative textual data, so enhancing our NLP skills such that we can really in ingest the wealth of data that is currently not being used in pricing markets um, and, and hoping to understand how that's going to impact the world going forward. Yeah, I think it's a great question. And in some ways, I think we've gotten kind of lucky. Um, you know, the last recession, the 0809 crisis, was a financial crisis. And a lot of, there have been a lot of financial crises in, uh, you know, throughout history. There have not been a lot of labor market shocks. And this is the first recession that I can remember where it was really spurred by a labor market shock. And, um, and I think that has disrupted labor markets everywhere. You know, there's... There were labor shortages, there was a great resignation, there's new ways of working. So I think the macro environment this time around is very, very labor market centric. You know, that's, that's what everyone's talking about, that's what everyone's thinking about. But I think, you know, who knows what's gonna happen in the future. I don't imagine there will be, you know, more labor market shocks. But, you know, on the micro level, um, you know, every, every firm is constantly thinking about how to manage their, their own workforce, how to adapt to a new macro environment. So I think, you know, the way, the way to adapt, the way to stay agile is just find, you know, what, what you're good at, what you're looking at, and, uh, and try to find some linkages to whatever the macro environment is. You know, even the geopolitical um, topics, you know, there's, there's ways to get at that from web scrape data, from employment data, from NLP, from all these, all these different processes. So, um, yeah, I think, I think there's ways to be adaptive. 